Amen. We're YouTube live. We're going to be exploring more with YouTube.com. And uh, so we just praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know when you're going to see this, but um, for the next 20 minutes, uh, God laid something on my heart to share with many of you. Amen. And we're going to talk about the conversion of Paul. Paul, his name was Saul, and he was later called Paul. And the Bible says that he uh, was religious. Now, he was very religious. And so many of you that are watching me right now, you're very religious. Amen. You are religious. You are uh, faithful to your church. You're faithful. Excuse me. Faithful to your pastor. Uh, you're loyal to the building fund. You're loyal to the usher board. You're loyal, amen, to your religion, and amen. And so now, because of the creation of denominations, everybody's fighting against each other, amen. And so uh, Paul, who was uh, who Saul, who was later called Paul, was locking up the Christians, locking up the saints. He was locking up the saints and uh, uh, killing them and putting them in jail, and he thought he was doing God a favor. Like many of you, you fight against pastors. You fight against churches. Amen. Maybe something had happened between you and the pastor. Maybe something happened between you and somebody in the church. Uh, maybe you were hurt. Maybe you thought that you could boss the pastor around because you were a big tither. Maybe you thought that, you know, God had gave you a different revelation of what was going on in a ministry. So you left because you felt that that wasn't your calling. That wasn't your uh, that wasn't your place anymore. And, um, and so, uh, you have left your ministry, but see, this is what God revealed to me. Uh, I'm going to pray father in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness. We ask you God to send your love and your power and the, the power of healing God, the power of direction, God, the power of the Holy Ghost, God, to break financial curses off of your people right now in the mighty name of the name of Jesus Christ. Touch your people now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the Lord was revealing to me that Paul was serving God all he knew how. And so I say this to you, those that are watching me right now, some people are die hard, sincere about the denomination or about the faith that they're in. Amen. Some of you that are watching now are Muslims and you are diehard Muslims. You are ready to die for Allah. You're ready to die for Muhammad. Amen. And and and, and not only the uh the uh the nation of Islam, but some of you are Shiite Muslims. Some of you, I mean come on, who do you think hit the towers in 911? They were Muslims. And, uh, you know, they, they were die hard. They gave their life because they felt that they sacrificed their life and, and ran into the towers that they're going to get the 10 virgins and they're going to be rich on the other side. Amen. There's, there's so many things uh, that uh, they were looking forward to. Amen. So many things they're looking forward to on the other side. So many false promises that have been made to them. Amen. But they are. Muslims to the heart. You got Jehovah Witnesses and Jehovah Witnesses to the heart. You got Buddha lights that are Buddhas to the heart. They're monks. They're Buddhas. They believe in what they're doing. You got people who are in the Catholic Church to the heart. And everybody, you know, tries to tell me, well, aren't Catholics Christians? Uh, don't they believe in Jesus? Amen. Well, a lot of people believe in Jesus, but a lot of people don't believe Jesus. They believe in Jesus but they don't believe Jesus, okay? The Bible says the demons believe with fear and trembling. Why? They've been up there with him. They've been up there on the throne with Jesus Christ on the throne. They know that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. And that's why, I mean, so many times in the word, Jesus constantly, you know, people pointed out to him when he when the man was lowered and he said, uh, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And everybody said, oh, he's blaspheming because only God can forgive sin. And Jesus turned around and said, exactly. Amen. You get it? Amen. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. Amen. And then in, 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 in the book of, uh, I think it's the book of John, 
Jesus looked up and said, Father, the hour has come, amen, that now that I will come back from where I came from. He said, glorify thou me with the glory that I once had before the world began. Amen. So uh, getting back to Saul of Tarsus, amen, uh, just to give you a, a little foundation of Saul of Tarsus, amen, he had gained papers from the government to go lock up and kill Christians. I mean, not Christians, saints. Amen. Saints. Okay, let me explain something about that. God never called his people Christians. The Bible says they were called Christians at Antioch because they had Jesus as a reference point. We don't have Jesus as a reference point today except what's written by him. Amen. We don't know how he dressed. We don't know how his beard looked. We don't know none of that stuff. All these people painting these redemption pictures of Christ. Amen. But nobody has in our generation or the many generations has seen Christ in the flesh. But many of there are those in this generation, including myself, who Christ has caught up to the throne. And I have stood in the presence of Jesus Christ. I have seen him with my natural eye. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't a vision. He caught me up. I saw him on the throne. Amen. And there's many people that have Jesus has manifested himself to them. Amen. So they know what he looks like. But in Antioch, they had reference because they were there when Jesus was walking around, healing the sick, raising the dead. Amen. You got to remember that the, the crucifixion had only happened maybe less than 20 or 30 years after they saw them. And they said, you guys are Christians. We're going to call you Christians because you act like Jesus. You walk like Jesus. You healing like Jesus. You preaching like Jesus. So we're going to call you Christians. But God never called his people Christians. He called them saints. In Psalms 50 and 5, he said, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by what? Sacrifice. Oh, by shot See, that's the word. The word is sacrifice. And 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 we uh, uh you know we address these apostles and all these folk, amen. We address them, uh, you know, uh where they're apostles and they got limousines and they live in mansions and and they got snakeskin shoes and leather cases full of cash and and these are the apostles, amen, and, and they can come in and they can see like a book and, and they can lay hands on folks and they can do all that stuff, right? But the point I'm making to you is that the real apostles, if you really go into the New Testament church and you study how Paul lived, if you study how the apostles, the Bible says they were open spectacle to the world. They were beat. They were whooped. They were lied on. They were persecuted. They were even homeless. You know, one time uh, Paul said to one of the churches, he said, he said that there, there was a time that you would pluck your eyes out and give them to me. I guess because they thought he had a seeing problem. He said, but you would pluck your eyes out. But now am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. When people first hear the truth, they're excited about it. When they hear about casting out devils, when they hear about healing the sick, when they hear about raising the dead, amen, when they hear about these things, they're excited about it. They're excited to see the miracles. When they learn about tithing, oh my God, they give thousands of dollars in tithing. But after a while, after a while, they're like, whoa, I'm, my tithes is $50,000? Oh my God, what could I have done with $50,000? What could I, what more could I have done with this money that I have given to God? Not to the church, but to God. Because he said in Malachi chapter three, verse eight, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be beat meat in my house. And the word tithe means a tenth, a tenth of everything. Amen. He told him, bring in the tenth. And the tenth is for the priest. And if it's for the uh, chief priest, the priest. And the Levitical priesthood, which are the singers, the musicians, all that other stuff. A lot of people do not believe in paying their musicians or blessing their musicians. But that's what the money is for. Amen. For the priests and for the, the, the assistants and, and, and also for the, uh, for the singers. So anyway, getting off, I don't want to get way off. Amen. But what I am saying is that the God called his people saints. And the word that's in the word saint is sanctified. 
Amen. God has sanctified his leaders and set them apart unto every good work. Amen. So our lives are, are sacrificed. He said, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So here's Paul. Uh, before Paul got on the road to Damascus, which we're going to read about in Acts chapter 9, Paul was locking up Christians, and he was there when the first martyr of the church was killed, and his name was Stephen. Amen. Stephen, Stephen, whatever you want to call him. And the Bible says that, that when they tried to come at Stephen with the scripture, he was so full of the word of God. He was so full of the word that he got with him. He got with him. Everything they said, Pharisees throwing stuff and, and religious leaders throwing stuff. So it was not the world that killed Stephen. It was the church. Amen. It's a crazy thing that the, your greatest enemies are in the church. David even said, it's not my enemy that rose up his heel against me. It's my own familiar friend who I did go to church with, who I broke bread with, who I had communion with, who I fellowship with. Those are the ones that have lifted up their heel against me. Amen. Some of you uh, bishops and pastors, your own sons, your own daughters have risen up against you. Amen. Because you wouldn't go with their folly. You wouldn't go with their foolishness or you made a mistake with them. Amen. A lot of pastors and bishops are growing, learning. Amen. And so uh, people always look for mercy from the pulpit to the congregation, but they never have mercy from the congregation to the pulpit. Amen. And so, so, uh, so, so Paul was standing there. Amen. And the Bible says he held their jackets and they, they asked for his permission because he was part of the Roman rule. He was a Jew, but he was Roman also. So he was locking up uh, the saints in the beginning for the Roman government. And so they turned to him and said, can we kill this dude right here? Amen. Because he, he's, he's, he, he beating us in the word. And Paul said, yes, go ahead, kill him. Amen. Stone him. Take him out of here. And the Bible says they stoned Stephen. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Some of you have fought the church so bad that if it was not for the love of God that these people had for God and for you, you might have been dead for what you've done, what you're doing to the church. Because God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. But let me show you this. While Stephen was there, they stoned him. And when they got through stoning Stephen, he stood up. And that shows you the stones didn't kill him. He stood up and nailed down, kneeled down. He looked up and he saw Jesus. And guess what he said? Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Because had he cursed them folks, had he said, oh, y'all going to die? What do you think would have happened to Saul of Tarsus, who later became Paul? Paul was the most prolific writer and apostle born out of due season in the New Testament. He did more work in the church than any of the apostles, establishing churches, confirming churches, ordaining pastors, ordaining young folks. This is what Paul did. Churches in Asia Minor, churches in Europe, churches in Israel, and churches all over the place. He was establishing and planting churches. Amen. And he had seen Jesus face to face. Now let's go to that point. Now had 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 um had uh Stephen said, God curse them, let them all die. Amen. Now that happened before in the in the old testament when Elijah was going up to pray, and the kids said, You old bald head, about 40 kids. Your old bald head, look at that old baldy head, that old bald head preacher. And the Bible says he turned around and cursed them. And the she bears came out of the woods and ate them, tore them all up. Amen. Tore them all up. Amen. The only reason that God ain't got you is because his mercy. Some of you have talked about your pastor like a dog. You've talked about ministers like a dog. You've accused them of things that they did not even do. You have done all of these different things to the men of God. You have abused them. I read in the book of uh, Jeremiah, now I know why he was a crying prophet. They abused Jeremiah. Why? Because Jeremiah told them the truth. He told them when the Babylonian Empire comes in here, he said, when they come in, surrender. Throw your hands up and surrender and nobody will die. But they told him, oh, we ain't punks. 
when they come up in here, we go fight. He said, no, humble yourself and people will live. But anyway, when they came in there, amen, the Babylonians came in there and start killing all of them, killing all the Israelites and killing the Jews and people scattering and all that. And so afterwards, they abused Jeremiah, the prophet. They abused him, threw him around, starved him. They did everything to this man of God. And then the last thing they did was put him in the miry clay. I always thought the miry clay was just a song, but no, they put him in the miry clay. And then they went back to tell the king, oh, we put that, we put that, that prophet in a miry clay. So he going to sink and he going to die. But guess what the Bible said? The black folks that was around the altar heard it. And they went and pulled him out of the miry clay. They saved the prophet. And then when Babylonia came over and they took over control over Israel, the next thing is one of the guys went to the king of Babylon and said, hey, here's, a, he, here's Elijah. I mean, here's the prophet of God. What do we need to do with him? They said, the prophet? They said, give him a house. Give him a food. Let him stay wherever he want to stay. Because that's a man of God. It's a shame that the world honors the men and women of God more than the church, more than you. Amen. The world has come and they come and bless. They come and bless. They come and bless the church more than the church. Well, I don't think Bishop Johnson should be on TV. So I'm not going to give to the TV ministry. I'm not going to pour nothing into the TV ministry. Amen. You don't want millions of souls to be saved, yet people that are watching it are sending finances in, amen, to bless the, the church, to bless the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here you are, you're supposed to be the children of God, and you refuse? That's something wrong with that. But that's what they did. They abused Jeremiah. But when the world got a hold of Jeremiah, they honored him, and they, they took care of him, and they fed him, and they said anywhere he wanted to stay, give him a house. And they took care of the man of God. So that's what happened with uh, Saul. Amen. Otherwise, Saul would have uh, Saul could have been killed. God could God would have killed him if 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 the man if Stephen didn't say, "Father, forgive him. He knows not what he do because he didn't know what he was doing, even though he was educated, could speak fourteen languages. He was dumb to the things of the spirit. Like many of you are dumb to the things of the spirit. You think you know everything. You think you got the spiritual history. You think you got the history of. Of, of stuff before the ages and you wasn't even living there all you're doing is reading some while somebody else is writing you wasn't there all you have is this bible this book right now and now all y'all young folks want to go beyond this book and go into history and the bible says what you're learning is gendering strife and more ungodly questions amen so look right here in acts chapter 9 and the Bible says, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest. So he got this legally. He got legal permission to destroy the apostles. He got legal permission. Just like today, they, they, there are a lot of laws that are out right now, things that you can do that are sin against the body. Their sin against the soul, amen, and God's law supersedes man's law in these particular areas, but because man has said, you know, this law is okay, now you say, well, this is the law of the land, so I can do all these different things, so you supersede the law of God, and look what it says here, so he's uh, 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 threatening out against, uh, he's doing slaughter, he went to kill against the disciples of the Lord and went unto the high priest. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the uh, synagogues, that if he found any in this way, whether they were men or women, he didn't even care whether it was women. At least protected women and children. But no, he wanted to wipe out everything that had to do with Jesus Christ and everybody that was naming Jesus Christ, that he might have them bound unto Jerusalem. I'm going to stop right here. Join us on the next video. Amen. And we're going to continue with this. We're going to find out what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus. Amen. Please uh, follow us. Please uh, subscribe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We want to get to 4 million subscribers. 
and we want to get over 4 million views, amen, so that we can take this ministry to another level right here on YouTube. We want to reach millions of souls. And don't forget to send us that love gift, cash app, money sign, J-I-T-A-9-9, J-I-T-A-9-9. And call for prayer, 310-637-7086. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson saying to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.